Hey y'all, I hope you're enjoying this section of thinking in functions. And really the goal of what we're doing this past week is to really think about what a function is and how we can break down a problem to think about what functions we would need to implement in order to solve that problem. So we're thinking about this in a visual way. We're trying to put together a scene, the one you see here that we've prototyped in a tool called Figma, that is a basic scene that has a sky, a ground, and some clouds in the sky. And what we're exploring is this idea of implementing a function that can draw a cloud. Now, we, we determined in class that a cloud can be viewed at as three separate circles. So what we're doing is we're really trying to develop a function that can draw three separate circles. So the goal of this lesson is to walk you through extending the function that we've already developed in order to create these clouds. So where we left off is we have this, this prototype and we have this, what we've developed so far, a blue background and a single circle with a black stroke on it. Okay, not exactly where we need to be just yet, but it is progress. We are making steps forward. Remember, I mentioned in the beginning of the semester, we have to take this content step by step, right? We're not going to get right to the end point where you're creating these awesome visual 3D scenes and programming all this interactivity. We need to take the steps to get there. And there's a fair amount of steps. So right now, we've, we're at this step. And this is the code that we have going on. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see it. We have our setup function, right? And we have our draw function. Our draw function doesn't have anything inside of it yet. We can, we could technically remove it, but we'll keep it there because we will use it eventually. So we have this cloud function that we created. This cloud function takes as two parameters. Remember, we're inputting information into our function to give it the information it needs to perform the task that we require of it. In this case, we need to draw three circles. And now what we're doing is we're actually drawing, how many circles are we drawing here so far? Only one, right? So we only have one circle. We're making one call to the ellipse function. So we're calling out to a function that we did not create in order to achieve our goals. But how many more eclipse functions do we need to create in order to create a cloud? Two more, right? Because we determined that the clouds that we're developing have three circles associated with them. Awesome. We can make a four circle cloud if we want, or a five circle. But right now, let's try a three circle. So how many more lines of code do we need in the cloud function to achieve our goal? Two more, right? Because we need to make two more calls to the ellipse function. So what we could do is we could just simply copy this line and paste it two more times. I'm doing that little control C, control V trick there to be able to just quickly do that. So now we have three ellipse calls and we have three circles, but let's look what rendered here. Still only one circle. Now some of you have immediately determined why that's the case, right? We're drawing the circle all three of them in the same exact position. We want to spread this out a little bit. So the second circle, maybe we want to move over to the right just a little bit. Now to do that, all we have to do is adjust this X position that we pass in. So the second circle is going to be drawn relative to the first circle. Think about that for a second. We're drawing one circle and then all of the other circles we draw are going to be relative. They're going to be in relation to the first circle. We want that because we're creating the illusion of a single cloud. We don't want the second circle to be all the way over on the other side of the screen because it won't look like a cloud then. So if we just adjust this by simply saying, hey, I want to move the X position plus 10. Let's just try 10 and see how it works. Now let's look at what renders here. Ah, look at that. Notice how the circle kind of just moves over a little bit. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make these circles a little bit bigger. So instead of 50, I'm gonna use 150 so you can see it a little better when I render it. So I'm just gonna change these 50s to 150s. 
and there we go now it's a little bit bigger but you can see now we have this kind of circle bulging out a little bit i'm keeping the stroke on here so that you can really see this so let's make that even further i'm going to say move it out let's say a hundred there we go now we have two circles side by side okay that's working now why don't we try to make the other circle go the other direction in the left direction so to do that we would adjust the exposition of the third circle but what do you think we do would we add 100 or would we subtract 100 we'd subtract right because we're going in the opposite direction so we're going to go ahead and say minus 100 now look at that now we have three circles this one's kind of going off the screen a little bit how can we move this so that it's not going off the screen remember we're giving the x position and the y position as a parameter to the cloud function call and up here is where we're actually executing it and we're saying render it at 100 100 so why don't we just move this bad boy over by saying hey the x position should be 500 by 100 now let's see what happens boom it moved over excellent you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to do this so that we can see this change as I edit the code. And I'll just move this over a little bit. And you know what? I'm going to make this move over a little bit now too so that we can... There we go. Okay, so not exactly looking like a cloud just yet, right? It's kind of just three circles. But we're getting there. So we could now start to change the size of these two pieces because remember our comp we have kind of different size circles to make this cloud look like a cloud so let's try that what would we change to do that we would have to change the size of the two additional circles that we have created now the simple way to do this, and this is the first way we'll do this, but we'll, we'll start to think about other ways once we, once we really lock this down, is to change these 150s. So right now, these 150s are defining the size of the circle. What we can do here is say, this circle, maybe we won't make it 150, maybe we'll make it 100 by 100. And look at that, now the circle got smaller, but the circle also, feels like it's it's over a lot but we won't we won't modify that just yet now we can also do the same thing to the third circle we can make this third circle maybe let's make it 120 by 120 okay so now we have three different size circles now to really complete this we have to take the stroke out so that these circles look like they're one thing so to do that, all we have to do is right before we call any of the ellipse functions, we can use another function call called no stroke. Now watch your case on this. You want to make sure that the S is capitalized. And now look what happens. It kind of turns into a cloud. It looks very much like the comp that we did here, the composition, right? The this the um the prototype. So it's okay. Why don't we try to move these in just slightly? Maybe instead of doing 100, we we do 70 in both directions. This will tighten it up a little bit. And there we go. Now it's a little tighter. Awesome. We have our cloud function. So this is the first part of the assignment. I want you to get to this point. But once you get to this point, I want you to think, how can I draw now additional clouds to the screen? using this function i'll give you a hint it's all about calling the cloud function so i'm going to leave you there with this get to this point and then draw at least two more clouds to the screen and then submit your assignment you got this have fun